Hello again. Today on Adventures with Paul, we're going to look at how I routed all the wiring around on my 3D printer. Um, this is a Mendel Max version 1.5, and it's all the extruded aluminum rail, so you got nice little notches to hide things in. Now, this here and this here are the Z-axis stepper motors. And I did my little twisted rope bit with the wire and I laid the wire inside the inner track here all the way around to this back corner under the power supply. Likewise with the other one. I was going to put both of them in the, uh, the bottom groove but I put it in the top groove on the other one and never moved it. But there's the z-axis motor wiring comes in goes right along the track to this corner. Everything is going to, from the bottom here is going to come out this corner right through there. All right. The uh, z-axis end stop is hiding right in there. I need to adjust that a little bit. It's, uh, I haven't set the uh, end stop for the z-axis yet. But the wiring for it is again my little twisted rope bit. It goes right in by the motor. goes in between the rails and lays in the track right down there and again goes back to the back corner. My uh, y-axis end stop is right there and it went straight to the edge. I'm using these little clips that came with the kit to hold the wires in the rails. I used That's all I use down here. I use no zip ties. You can see them right in there. So Everything down here, the z-axis motors, the y-axis motor, the z-axis end stop, and the y-axis end stop all comes to the back right corner between the uh, corner vertex and the uh, y-axis rail support. Now, this red box right here is my uh, outlet my power entry and switch and I oriented the wire coming out right towards the corner I used a piece of power cord rather than the supplied black white and green wire so where are we? there we are power cord going right up to the power supply so power into the supply right there now my power and ground from here go straight into my ramps board. All right. I'm going to flip this guy back over and uh, we'll continue in a second. And we're back. Uh, 3D Printer Girl made the comment about uh, flipping the thing upside down and putting it on the uh, spool uh, supports. Um, works very well. Um, makes it very convenient to get to the stuff on the bottom. Um, from the corner here, the back right corner now, Here's about one of the few places I use zip ties. I brought uh, the bundle up and it goes between the acrylic and the power supply. And I zip tied it to the power supply support right there. And I kept the bundle together all the way up. And there's another power supply support back here. And there's a zip tie to hold that bundle in tight. Now. The wiring for the motors is long enough for everything except that z-axis motor. The wire on that wasn't long enough, so I spliced a male connector onto one of the four-wire motor uh, cables that was supplied so I could just extend the y-axis cable by the length necessary to go up and over all my uh, motors come in right around there. Um, some of the motors had a little extra cable. This is all the extra wire that the motors had. There's three loops right here. One of them worked out fine. One was too short. Three were too long. So all I did was bring it up. I didn't quite tie it in a ponytail, but I just tuck it down in behind there and it hides it rather nicely. Everything else is cut to length. Uh, my thermistor run uh, for the hot end and the table, uh, both come up behind the board, go down to the bundle here, 
let's see, hold on. For the uh, heated bed, I have one of these corrugated tubes. It's Panduit Flex, I think. Anyhow. So, thermistor and heated bed wiring going to right there. Um, it's bare wire to the corner. I used a couple of zip ties right there to that support bolt. There's a standoff there, an aluminum standoff holding the heated bed to the aluminum plate. Um, while I'm thinking about it, I got a note from 3D Printer Tech saying my aluminum reflective heat shield was supposed to be stuck down using the adhesive backing. Who knew? It was almost impossible to get the backing off, but when it came off, it stuck down very nicely. So we got that taken care of. There you can see I uh, lopped the corner off to get uh, the standoff set flat down on my plate. There's the reflector right there. Anyhow, so heated bed and thermistor go up the corrugated tube, come around, oh, what am I pointing here, into the bundle, into the board. Uh, likewise for my x-axis motor right here and fan. I have routed the fans through there as well. Um, right through the corrugated tubing up to the vertex up here, zip tied to this vertex piece here. So all the wiring's coming together right at this spot. Um, from my hot end, you have the stepper motor for the extruder and its fan going up into a bit of the uh, corrugated tubing. I have two pieces here. A thin piece to get from the thermistor down here. Let's see if we can see it. Okay, you got the thermistor wire and the uh, resistor wire here for the hot end. They go up a short length of narrow diameter panduit. Add in the motor and the fan to a thick piece of panduit up and into our nexus here where we feed down. Most of the stuff going to the bottom end of the board goes behind the board. So the hot end loops up, or rather, uh, let's see, the heated bed, a little dim there. Anyhow, uh, can I throw some light on the subject? All right. The uh, right to the black and the red are the uh, heated bed. The left to the two reds are the hot end, and the red and the black in the middle are the fans. So uh, I ran into an issue with the fans as well. I made a mention about this one. Um, I had holes. So I went ahead and mounted a screw and a nut, and a screw and a nut, and a third one hiding down here. So it's kind of a uh, slip-on arrangement right now. The guys at 3D Printer Tech mentioned using a bungee or a rubber band to hold this in place, but it fits now. I folded the wires over to the side, and there's enough space, so I got my fan now. Um, let's see. The uh, Y-axis stepper and uh, fan. I have it run through a little piece, you know, I had a couple of clips left over, so I ran it through there and up into the bundle, up and over. <sighs> ah, the uh, x-axis end stop right here. Again, with the twisted rope wire, I have my clips holding it in all the way up. You can see it tucking out right there, clips going across, and it comes out, goes in and under, and comes out right here to go into the, the big bundle. All right, now, uh, the last item, uh, the, well, a couple items, the control panel, I kind of brought the ribbon cables out and uh, gave them a little looping twist, laid them flat against this plastic support piece, brought them out, 
and up in here. So they're all flat, a couple of zip ties there. Most of the zip ties I use are all hidden away. Um, the last item, I videoed my, uh, my LEDs. Uh, the strips were long enough that I couldn't fit them on this surface down here where they were supposed to go. They, I would have to cut them. And I didn't want to do that. You can see it's, uh, it goes all the way to here and that's longer than the gap where this piece of extruded aluminum comes up. So I put them on the inside and again on this side the uh, end of it is right here and my extruded aluminum rail ends right here. So, put it on the inside. I routed this power wire with the ribbon cable, and the other one it just uh, loops around. Comes out behind the board and uh, tucks in to power right there. That's the uh, the two sets of wires for the uh, LEDs. And anytime the board gets power, the LEDs come on. Um, the fans are all controlled by uh, G-code. That's why I have them wired into the middle set there. That would normally be for the um, a second extruder, which I'm not using. Um, my unused thermistor is in there as well. That's one of the few things that's not plugged in on that side of the board. Everything else is pretty much used. So I think that's it for our wiring. Everything is routed neatly. You can barely see any wire just looking down at the thing. I mean, you got a black bundle here. You got a black bundle there. A black bundle there. And this little, I ran out of pan to it. I don't really need it there actually, but I might throw a piece on there just to be consistent. But. The z-axis, of course, moves up and down, and I got enough slack here for this end stop to move up and down with. All in all, it wasn't that hard to get that routed. It took four tries to get everything the way I wanted it, and I think I'm pretty satisfied with the way it looks. This is a little messy, but you're bringing a whole bunch of stuff together in one place. It's kind of hard to make that look neat and orderly but that's how it stands. Well, that kind of covers the uh, wiring we did. Um, I'm going to be away for a couple of days. Uh, won't be able to play around with this at all until uh, Friday, actually. I hope to get this video and the uh, others up before I depart. Uh, family's going on vacation to Cedar Point to ride the roller coasters. We're going to be gone for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, I'll be back to uh, actually get this thing going. I need to program the uh, ramps board uh, with uh, Marlin and figure out how the software works. Um, that'll be the next steps and uh, hopefully on Friday we'll actually be printing. So I'll see you then.